This is our Rice Exchange. I am Bosina Mofayana. Warm welcome to our viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. This is a special interview edition of the program in tonight, as the markets remain closed for the holidays until Wednesday. Now, let's get a bit of a wide outlook and a broader look into the economy into the new year 2022. My first guest tonight is I turn now to Muda Yusuf, the immediate past director general of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Yusuf is now the CEO of the Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise, or CPPE, and is live here in our Lagos studios. Thanks for standing by. Thank you so much, sir, for, for coming through. We appreciate your coming all Thank the time you. on the program. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoy your holiday. I did. Well, a little bit of that we can use in Lagos. So here we are with your center uh, rolling out uh, several pages of what you call an economic review of 2021. And I think to a large extent, we, we all have an idea of where we are. We want to spend this time with you to look at what should be on our agenda for 2022 and what needs to change. This is going to be an election year, by the way. So electioneering year before the elections. So I'm going to ask by asking you one key area that we haven't really been able to resolve is our food sustainability, because about everything else we'll discuss about infrastructure, macroeconomic environment, we need to put food on the table. So uh, my, my question is, how, how do we resolve this issue, low, lower our food import bill, uh, save foreign exchange, for example, and, and create jobs through agro-allied industry? Do you have any new ideas that we can harvest from you? Well, uh, thank you very much, and compliments of the season. Uh, you know, the CBN has been doing quite a lot, and of course some other government agencies around, around agriculture, particularly in the area of financing. I think one thing we need to do quickly is to connect those financing to outcomes, because we have had quite, quite, a, quite a huge number of, of money that has been rolled out under the development finance initiatives. And there is an irony, or possibly a paradox, that we are spending so much, and there's so much energy focused on agriculture, and yet we are still having this kind of crisis, especially as reflected in the food inflation. So it is important to ensure that we are doing the right thing in the area of financing of agriculture. That is one. Secondly, we need to understand that it is not just about funding. I was about to ask that. Is this it something structurally problematic? Yes, yes. It's not just about funding. A lot of factors need to work together to be able to deliver the kind of outcomes we are expecting. Give me one or two or two. Security is, is, is key. Yes. Because, I mean, we are all aware of what impact insecurity has had on our cultural output on the farmers, the displacement of farmers, and all of that. But before insecurity mm. that is mm. as widespread as we have it today, yes. we were not really game-changing in terms of food. We were importing massively. We were, we were. Again, there is the issue of technology. Because if you look at the, the agricultural space, particularly those in primary production, almost 80 to 90% of them are still you know, functioning in that space with holes and cutlasses. Manual. 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 No, so they, 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 not they, they, intensive not, mechanized not intensive, farming. No, no intensive mechanization, very little application of technology and all of that. So that is also an issue. That is affecting productivity. It's affecting the yields per acre. So that is, that is an issue. Of course, of course, security is also an issue. Then there's also the issue of connectivity. Because it is one thing to produce in the, in the rural areas. It's another thing to connect to the market. With a tomato, tomato onion, yes. watermelon, whatever I mean, we, we have data on the, the amount of post-harvest losses that we record because of the challenges of ease of access either to the cities or to the markets. Or to in the, what about industries? Access to industries. But are the industries there? The processing? Of course, of course. You know, that brings me to the point of the value chain. Because our Greek is not just about primary production. It's also about looking at the entire value chain. But we love our food, our meals, primary in Nigeria. Yes. By culture. But everything has to go together, especially in these days that we are talking about ESCTA, we are talking about connecting to the global value chain and all of that. All of these things have to go together to ensure efficiency, to ensure productivity. We spent 
Nearly 60 years we've not been able to do agro-industrialization for export massively. Yeah. Well, that is a challenge for all of us. So we so need to what, focus... What is change in the agri space in 2022? Well, it's to focus on all these areas. It's to focus on all these areas. So, we have so, to look so beyond... You know, that takes us back to funding. So you've got a Ministry of Agriculture that gets mm -hmm. its annual budget. Yes. And you've got a central bank that has the print money. And it can use CRR, whatever it is, to stimulate whatever it's doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where do we need to spend, really, to get more value out? You see, agriculture is not... It's an interministerial thing. You need the Ministry of Works and Housing to play a very critical role. Because if you don't have the road to connect all these rural communities with the cities and all of that, you cannot have a functioning agriculture. You need the Ministry of Water Resources to facilitate irrigation and all of that because you are talking about having an all year round agriculture. You need a lot of investment in that. You know, and of course you need the Ministry of Transport and all of that. You know, so it's, it's a whole lot of things. It's not just about so we talk making about funds available and corporate. Of course, that is part of it, but that is just one leg of so it. So the entire ecosystem, interministerial. You just talk about close to four ministries here, exactly involved exactly. in in agriculture or what you call food sustainability. They have to be involved. Even power, because you need storage. You need power for processing. You need industries to process. You need exporters. Refrigeration. You need, yeah, refrigeration. You need packaging. You need even export. This is, uh, these are all part of the ecosystem. So it has to be something that needs to be addressed holistically. We were trying we to address about. this issue, so we went for the 41 items list. And what, what would you like to see moving forward in these areas of the 41 items? Credit, not just by the central bank, which is just in its direction, but the banks themselves need to give credit to the private sector. You see, the whole idea of the 41 items was to manage demand for Forex. That is the whole idea. But there's a challenge with it. Because the way it is, it is, it is structured, it's as if you have under parallel trade policy. Because the 41 items is about whether you can import or you cannot import it. And I spoken to the manufacturers. When you disaggregate the 41 items into HS codes, it comes to about 600 HS codes. And the Manufacturers Association have even conducted a study to say that 50 of that 600 HS codes are products that are not available locally as intermediate products for manufacturers. So the point I'm making here is that there has to be proper collaboration, consultation, stakeholder engagement. So that we don't have a situation where, of course, we appreciate the, the nationalism, economic nationalism of the central bank, you know, trying to compel and trying us to, to save and try to save and to, compel to, us to, 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 to look in what's that. That is fine. Yes. But in the process of doing that, we need to be a lot more painstaking. So that in the process of that, we don't create some other problems. Because you, are now, you now have on that list things that are even intermediate products for some manufacturing companies. But here companies. we are, the central bank is pulling on one side, but who should be pulling the other side for the two? I haven't seen, and I haven't really seen much, but those in the aviation industry will tell you, you can hardly fly with one engine because you need two engines to fly. You need two engines. So if the central bank is saving the FX, who is pulling the other side? Is it, is it, is it finance ministry? They have to work together. Because what is at stake so the now? The finance ministry is to provide the fund. Who else should support no, it? Because they, we are talking for policy. For the one talk about products. Where is the industry? Trade and investment. Yeah. That's where my point really is. Yeah. No, the, the trade and investment is also part of it. Yeah. But what we are talking about here is not so much what is being produced. It's about the policy environment that you create for this production to happen. This is a policy matter. It is not the CBN that we do the production. Or it's not the finance ministry or the ministry of industry. It is investors. So if there is this, if, if, if there is this divergence, if there is no harmony, if there is no synchrony in the policy space, between, then, then you create a lot of problems for investments. Between the fiscal? Be, between the fiscal, the CPN, finance, industry, ministry, particularly those, even ministry of agriculture. We have the NIA Investment Promotion Commission. Yes. All of this has to be part of this whole process because this is give sometimes conflicting signals. 
And this economy is to be driven by the private sector. It's to be driven by investors. If you are having this kind of, of course, the, 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 the authorities mean well, the CBN means well, the finance ministry means well, but if the signals are conflicting, it creates a problem for, for investors. Or if one side is pulling more than the other. Yes, it, it, creates, it creates a problem for investors. Absolutely so we need to make that happen. I'm worried how we can create this 11-man team that all are aiming for the same goal and they're working at the same purpose. And look at one problem with our seaports, for example, which takes us from agriculture, industrial value chain, yeah. all the way to the seaport, and again we can talk about the EFCFT. Yeah. And yet we are, the major seaport is still a problem, seriously challenged, even as we are finishing up with 2021. Any new idea how to fix this problem? I've spoken to virtually everyone. It looks like... I'm not sure there are new ideas. I think what needs to change is the political will to change the situation. Every idea is we on have, the table? Yes. We have the human problem. That is corruption, extortion, and all of that. It's a human problem. It's a question of bringing discipline to the table as far as the entire ecosystem is concerned. Either you are talking about those who are managing the traffic, or you are talking about those who are clearing the cargo, the, the truck inspection. drivers, inspection. The whole you know, chain of, of, of people involved. If you don't bring discipline to the table, if there are no consequences for some of these, some of these uh, problems, then we will continue to, 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 to move around in cycle. Secondly, we have the issue of facilities. The port itself is overstretched. There has been no major investment in that port for the past 10, 20 years. And the economy is growing. Import, import is growing. So there is also that, that issue. Then there is the issue of inadequate use of technology. We, well, still, we still examine cargo manually, physical examination of cargo, yeah, physical import, documentation we've of We've been importing order. scanners and all that for years. But, I, know, but, I don't know. But, but we are still on the same spot. All of this is also contributes to all the problems we have. Everybody who is going to do exports, and including you and I, has to face a new tax regime in next year. That's what the Minister of Finance was quoted as saying Nigerians should prepare for a higher tax environment next year. What's your thought? Well, I think the minister needs to take it easy. Uh, of course, for those who are not already in the tax net, fine. We should bring as many people who are supposed to be in the tax net into the tax net. But for those who are already there, in fact, I would say that they are already overburdened. Too many taxes already. At the federal level, at the state level, and also from the agencies with whom they interface. They pay all sorts of fees, license fees, renewal fees, registration fees, and all of that. All of these things are putting a whole lot of burden. Because you need the investors to be alive for them to be able to give you revenue. And you have to decide whether you want 20%, 30% or something big, or you want 100% or zero. You have to make a decision. You, you also disagree mm -hmm. that the tax tribunal should uh, uh, asking uh, those who have uh, uh, issues to, to Deposit 50 percent. Yes, the yes, yes, yes. Amount in dispute. That, that is a major dispute. issue that borders on fair hearing. Because if you have a tax dispute, the rule with the tax tribunal now is that you have to deposit 50 percent of the amount in dispute. So, if, for instance, you are, you are you have a dispute around a billion or two billion, or it could even be a trillion, you have to put on the table as a deposit 50 percent of that before the appeal can be had. That is an obstruction of justice. It is a rule, it is not a legislation. That is why we are appealing to the finance minister to please address that issue. So that we don't have a situation where you want to appeal, you cannot appeal, because you don't have the 50% deposit to, to, to drop. Then make sure you don't break the law. Of course, that, but the law has, also has to be fair. Yeah, the law has uh, to be fair. Yeah. But make sure in the first place you pay your due tax <laughs> so course. that you don't have to get to the tribunal in the first place. <laughs> exactly, uh, exactly. Uh, that, it's that's also, that's also fair. Yes, it's also fair. Okay, it's also so fair. from your chamber, for your centre, what else should be on the table for the private sector in 2022? It's going to be an electioneering year. Well, uh, in 2022, we are likely to see a lot of distraction. Away as, from, as always. Yes, we are like to see a lot of distraction away from economic governance, issues of policy, into, into politics. I think that is likely to happen. But as much as possible, I think what we expect the policymakers to do is to create the environment, the policy environment, the regulatory environment, 
and to ensure that we have minimum distraction or disruption to the economic functioning, economic policy process, economic activities in the area of regulation and policy, so that we don't, we don't uh, say because we are into preparing for elections and all of that, and we relegate the economy completely. I think we, we need to ensure that. I mean, already we have issues with the macroeconomic environment, which we are still struggling to fix. We have issues with some, some, some uh, the sectors have issues with the regulatory environment, which requires a lot of engagement. I think that should still continue. And the policy process should be evidence-based. It should also be driven by stakeholder engagement. Whether we are talking of monetary, whether we are talking of fiscal, whether we are talking of regulation, stakeholder participation and engagement consultation is very important so that we are all on the same page. That I don't create an environment that is hostile to, to, to investment and to investors. Many thanks for making your time on for this engagement tonight. Thank you so much, sir. See more Thank you. In the new year. Muda Yusuf, Thank you. CEO at the Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise and the immediate past Director General of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Mm -hmm.